Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, my name is Pu Li, and uh, I'm very excited to introduce Gator system and uh, its applications to you today. So at the beginning, I want to give you a very brief introduction of the principle for uh, our technology, bio-layer interferometry. So you have a light shines through the the biosensor for us is this a small glass fiber. So the light shines through and get bounced back. So between the incident light and the reflection, you form this interference pattern. Then when you have a biomolecule binding to the tip of the biosensor, this interference pattern will be shifted. That shift is the signal you will be reading on the instrument in real time and very straightforwardly, yeah. And uh, so the gator system has uh, three main components. The top one is this uh, decomposable uh, biosensor, we call it a probe. And uh, my group working on developing the biochemical layers coating on the tip of this biosensor for different applications. You, it's very small, one millimeter diameter, and one centimeter long with a silicon ring. And uh, our instrument is uh, about this big, uh, the desktop, a little bigger than microwave, and uh, it's plate-based with a, not either 96 or 384 plate, depending on your model. And so it's very user-friendly. You pipette your sample to the plate, and then the picker will pick eight, we have eight channels to pick biosensor to go through your samples. So I have an example of how user-friendly it is. We do have a summer interns um, be able to use it independently the second day of his work. So because there's no microfluidic system, you will not, not worry about clogging it. You will never mess it up. Yeah. And then the, we also have a, a very uh, intuitive software with uh, the, the latest feature we added is uh, the 21 CFR part 11 for our users and their GMP or GLP environment, yeah. So here is a brief uh, overview for our uh, menu. You can see a lot of uh, applications um, for uh, antibody development. Uh, you might be very familiar with, such as protein A, G, L, human FC, mouse FC, FAB, anti-FAB. And also we have a, a lot of sensors for uh, different tags, uh, NICO NTA, anti-HIS, strep Eviden, also for small molecule applications, the SMAP kit. But today I'm focusing on the AAV-related applications. That's our latest additions to the menu. The first one is the AAV titer determination. And we have uh, this uh, full package for you. And uh, so together, you see you can, we, our product covers from the, the dynamic range covers from upstream all the way to downstream process. For upstream, you can use this sensor in crude extract. So it's very convenient and save your time. And to, for downstream, it's, uh, you don't need to do tedious dilution. It's a one-step assay for direct titer determination. For details, I can show you an example. This is, we use our AAV, the X and AAV9 biosensor. You have uh, this one-step binding curve. You can see if you, for higher concentration, you will be able to have a determination of your sample, eight of them in as fast as two minutes. So the initial rate of your binding correlate to the concentration. Dynamic range for these two products is from 10 to the power of nine to 13. 
direct one step assay in minutes. And the, 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 bind, the ligand we coated on the sensor, the tip of the biosensor is from a thermal fissure, capture select the nanobody. You might be uh, using it for your affinity column too. Yeah. And the, although the sensor itself is disposable, but you can also reuse it, regenerate and reuse it by elute the biosensor in acidic solution too. So it's very uh, cost efficient and uh, environmental friendly. And this is our uh, correlation study of our assay to the progen ELISA. And here is an example of AAV8. But if you want to see more data, we have a thorough study uh, on this application notes uh, you can find on our website. So feel free to uh, download it. It's a very good correlation. And to be able to see a lower concentration, to reach a higher sensitivity, we also developed this high sensitivity kits, both AVX and AV9. And then the, if you look at the illustration here, we, after you capture the, the nanobody capture the capsid, we have the secondary antibody uh, biotinolated, so, and bind it to the capsid too. Then you have a strep evident conjugated with HRP to amplify the signal. The signal amplification is because of the substrate for HRP has a really high refractive index. So it's a deposit on the biosensor surface, give you a very high signal. Yeah. The beauty of it is you still can use your crude lysate because you're fishing the capsid out of your crude solutions. Yeah. So here is the recovery study. I, I believe this is the AAV5 and spiked into HAC293 uh, crude lysate yeah. at different uh, concentrations and you still have a great recovery. Yeah. So uh, the latest uh, development uh, product we have is this uh, Gator Ratio case to help you decide uh, empty versus full ratio in crude um, lysate. Yeah. So the, this is the design of the assay. It's a three-step workflow. At the beginning, you still you use AVX sensor to to capture the capsid from your crude solution. The beauty of it, that's the beauty of this assay is you kind of fishing it out, so you, you're doing a mini purification actually. So you don't worry about a lot of um, uh, non-specific binding on your surface. We do have a, our special conjugate to prevent it. Then your biosensor together with this captured capsid will be moved to the lysis buffer and heated up at a 70 degree. Then the DNA, the single strand DNA will release, will be released to the solution. Then the second probe, which is DNA specific binding probe will go to the, the plate, the 96 well plate and bind it to DNA. So you have a two affinity uh, specific binding here, capture both capsid concentration and the DNA concentration to give you very accurate ratio information. So here is an example of how your raw data will look like. This is the reading from the two steps that, that on, your, on the left is the AAV capture step, it's uh, you, no matter even the different uh, uh, ratio, the package rate, you still have a quite a consistent reproducible capture signal. And then the, on, your, on the right is an example of the standard curve. I believe this is um, with AUC assigned a, a ratio and we, we dilute it with empty capsid. So start from 90% full all the way down to 
you DNA signal representing the percentage full. And derived from this raw data, you got this standard curve. And you can, you can tell it's quite linear. So the linearity of the standard curve to cover the full range give you a guaranteed accuracy and the reproducibility of this assay. Again, uh, as I mentioned, because of our special capture step, you will be able to use this assay at the very early of your process in your uh, crude lacet. And this is the study uh, of our recovery. Uh, I believe it's AAV8 uh, spike. We've spiked it in both buffer and uh, HAC293 crude lysate. Yeah, it's almost 100% recovery at a different range of the uh, percentage full, yeah. So uh, the, this is an example of a customer demo we just did. And uh, provided from the customer, this is their standard curve. And uh, at the bottom, you can see this crude sample they provided in triplets, triplicate. And uh, the final result is around 9% full, which is as they expected. I believe determined by their old assay, which is a combination of ELISA and the DDPCR. Yeah. OK, so uh, the last slide, my slide, is to be able to, uh, to show you the potential of the machine. Because you have seen the principle of this uh, bio-layer interferometry, so it could uh, uh, actually uh, see almost any kind of uh, biomolecule interaction. So for this application, the customer is binding fab onto uh, AAV. I think uh, carry it through membrane, that's the goal. But the, he wants to know the kinetics. So by this is a quick assay setup, he could be able to derive uh, K on, K off, affinity constant easily from the binding curves. And um, for you guys, I think if you want to see receptor binding to your AAV or anything else, it's a really easy setup on our system. Okay. So to summarize my talk, because I only have 15 minutes, I think. So uh, we are providing Gator Bio, we are providing this very um, easy and fast solution for you to be able to have a very uh, early determination on your AV titer and empty versus full ratio in a very user-friendly setup. And uh, if you want to know more, please feel free to stop by our booth at uh, number one, to five, uh, you will be able to see the instrument. We have uh, both models there and all these biosensors and uh, applications. Please feel free to stop by. Thank you for listening. Thank you. If someone has some question, feel free to come to the microphone. Yes, uh, nice talk. Um, did you do any more extensive bridging studies comparing your data regarding to classical DDPCR, ELISA, or QPCR, ELISA ratios? For, side for, side? The, for the empty versus full? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, uh, it's more like a customer demos. That's where we got the, the comparison data. So we do have a good correlation to AUC. You see the standard curve, and the, the latest data is uh, comparing to DDPCR. It's good correlation. We have a paper on website to show that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Hi. thank you. Really good job uh, to test the full and empty mm -hmm. at an early thank stage. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is because a crude sample is really dirty, mm -hmm. uh, when we do all the ICs, we need a benzene to treatment to release the whole cell DNA over there. Mm. For your method, do you have that concerns, or how did you make sure whole cell DNA doesn't affect your titer? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, um, because the first step is the capsid affinity binding, mm. 
-hmm. And after that, we have a, a wash step too okay. on the net 96 well plate. Mm -hmm. uh, we, so far, we didn't see any uh, host cell DNA get captured on the sequential DNA probe mm -hmm. because it's only capsid on your probe and uh, got lysed and released into the solution. Mm -hmm. Then the second the DNA probe uh, goes to there, it's kind of already purified. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you expose what kind of the, you know, the full percentage from a crew sample 293 mm -hmm. ISO 293P? What is that? You know, percentage full from mm -hmm. your data from a crew samples from crew a sample. yeah, 293 ISO 293P? That yeah. three. Uh, it's 293 okay. yeah, T. Yeah, yeah, yeah there. Yeah. So far, we only tested the 293 T. Yeah. Okay. Thank mm. you. Mm -hmm. We can try more. Mm 